Alright everyone, uh, hello, I am Yuri, and I will be doing an Elden Ring tier list video. I don't know how many of these people have done, because I honestly don't look at Elden Ring YouTube too much, but I want to give my honest opinions, because I feel like some bosses are a little overhyped, and some of them are underappreciated. So, I have done uh, three and a half runs of this game. Um, I have done a strength build, an int build, and a faith build, and on my bucket list is a level 1 build, and uh, maybe dex in the future. But I will be basing these bosses off of solo play, meaning no summons and no ashes summons and none of that shit. Because I believe the only true way to enjoy a souls quality boss fight is to do it alone. Furthermore, I will judge them based off of all three of my playthroughs, meaning mostly melee strats. I do have a few range strats from uh, my int and faith builds, but those will be mostly uh, irrelevant because I think melee is how this game is intended to be played as seen by some of the bosses. And now finally, there will be hot takes I do believe, uh, as I said in the beginning, that some bosses are overrated and some are very underappreciated. So here's the tiers I will be basing them in. S tier is a fun and balanced perfected boss. These are bosses that uh, I honestly look forward to playing and uh, fighting in every single playthrough. And the worst part of the boss is beating the boss and realizing you have to do another run or go somewhere really far away to fight him again. So this is like the best of the best. A tier is fun and balanced, but there might be some minor complaints that keep it away from the S tier. Uh, I reckon this will, uh, will be a pretty populated spot on the tier list because the bosses are decent. B will be for fun, but have some balance issues. I value fun over balance, because obviously the game is meant to be fun. C is balanced, but not exactly fun. And you might only be able to achieve fun if you do it with some strats. D tier is not fun and not balanced, but is still alright as a boss. Now we have a unlabeled tier for literally normal enemies. In other words, they're normal enemies. You're gonna fight them a lot, so who cares? And we have a trash tier. And uh, the perfect example of a trash tier boss, I will drag it out from down here real fast. Let me locate him real quick. <laughs> uh, sh there he is, Godskin Duo. I think anyone, everyone can agree that this is the worst boss in the game, and we'll explain it when we get there. Anyways, we'll start by taking out all the normal enemies. I'm pretty sure Battle Mage Hughes is a normal enemy, Beastman of Faroom Azla is a normal enemy. Uh, Cemetery Shade is unique enough, so I'm gonna keep him away from bottom, from a uh, normal tier. Let's see, Clean Rod Knight is a normal enemy. Uh. Crystallians are normal enemies, but they do serve as a boss, in my opinion. Demi-Human Chief is a normal enemy. Again, uh, Bridge Golem, also pretty normal enemy. But I'm considering keep it in. Actually, no. We fight so many of these things. Priest of Blood is in basically a normal enemy. Uh, Fell Twins is a normal enemy. Uh, you fight these guys in the sewers, and you do fight two of them, so... It's literally the boss. Uh... Fia's champion is just... AI PvP. This is a normal enemy. <laughs> uh... Let's see here. Uh... Grave Warden Duelist. It... There is a version of him in Lindell, so, but he is unique enough, so I'm going to keep him in the boss. Leonine Misbegotten, again, there is a version of him in, I believe, uh, Halig Tree, 
but he's unique enough. I'll keep him in. Kindred of Rot is a normal enemy. There is an area with a billion of them. Uh, Mad Pumpkin Head is a normal enemy. Uh, Lion Guardian is unique enough, even though he is pretty... Yeah, you get the idea. Miranda is a flower. That's a normal enemy. Uh, Nox Duo are normal enemies. Omen Killer is basically... A, actually, we'll keep him back here. Patches is a PvP fight. He is a normal enemy. Perfumer is a normal enemy. What the flip is an Onyx Lord? Oh! He's one of those gravity tall burnt victim people. He's a normal enemy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Scaly Misbegotten is a normal enemy literally in the beginning of the game. Like in Weeping Peninsula. He is a normal enemy. Uh, Gideon Ulfnir is PvP. But he's kind of unique, so I'll give him a spot here. Soldier of Godric. That's hilarious. <laughs> this is a snail. That's pretty funny, too. Uh, what exactly is going on in Royal Revenant? I do not remember this boss. Let's look it up. Royal Revenant. Elden Ring. Who are you? Oh, that is a normal enemy. <laughs> see rune bear is a normal enemy actually not really you only fight them 1v1 i'll keep him down here because there is argument to be made he has a decent boss move set so i'll keep him here the troll is a normal enemy uh warm face i'll keep warm face here abductor virgins i have to keep him here aiden is somewhat you know he's not unique at all he's a normal enemy wait Onyx Lord and Alabaster Lord. Oh, it's another skinny man. He's also a normal enemy. Electo. Ancient Hero of Zamor is technically a normal enemy. But he is unique enough, so I'll keep him here. And I believe that should make up all the normal enemies. There's nothing really to talk about for them. Because you fight so many of them. Now, let's get to it. How do we want to start off? Hmm. I think the proper way to f start off would be somewhat in the order of which people encounter them, right? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's go ahead and start with what people usually experience maybe as their first boss, being the Erdtree Burial Watchdog. So, the Burial Watchdog is a unique enemy. I don't think we've ever seen anything like it in the form that he's a statue. So his attacks are super fast and look super jonky. Uh, but as a boss, it's hard to say. He only has really two threatening attacks. The one where he stands up and walks towards you and you dodge when he lifts his sword. And another attack where he flies into the air and slams down a lot. Both of those are huge openings. And he has a smaller opening where if he starts breathing fire, you can get behind him and poke him. But just be careful that he will turn really fast at the end, so you can't get too greedy. Overall, this guy is boring. So I will put him in C. He's a balanced fight, but I don't even think I can say he's fun with some strats. He's just straight up boring. Now... Other people's first boss may include the Putrid Tree Spirit. Well, it would be an Ulcerated Tree Spirit, which I don't believe is actually on here. I'm trying to see, look. Oh, actually, Grafted Skyon. I have to put this here. Grafted Skyon is... He's pretty bad. Um... If you're close to him, he has a whole slew of undodgeable bullshit. But if you stay your distance, he has three punishable attacks. One is his four attack combo where he does uh, swipes and then like a double swipe or a stab. And then he does a third swipe, which you can roll in on 
and attack him, and he will follow up with a fourth one if you're close in front of him, which you can sidestep to the left and straight up ignore. He has and he has two jump attacks. He is for sure a balanced boss, but the fact that you have to stay some distance away makes him not the greatest. Well, this is literally the first boss, so I guess I should have done him first. Uh, now, let me see if uh, Ulcerated Tree Spirit is on here. If not, I'll just use uh, Putrid Tree Spirit as a replacement. It does not look like he's there. Yep, I will use Putrid Tree Spirit. Now, this will be my first hot take of the game. Actually, Tree Spirits are, in my opinion, one of the most fun fights in the game. Every time I boot up the game, I will pick up a Stone Sword Key as my starting item, or Bum Rush, like two Stone Sword Keys, so I can fight the uh, Tree Spirit in uh, the Hero Grave. Uh, everything he does is extremely telegraphed, and he has different movesets based on which side of him you are on. From range, he can do a dash towards you, which involves three hits. He does dash one, dash two, and dash three. I believe there is a pause between the first and second, and the second and third are fast dashes. And uh, he will follow it up with a roar, and then wrap himself... Uh, to the left of you and then come down with a grab attack and you if you roll the grab attack you can punish him and then he curls away and does a fire attack most of the time which you can also punish if you're on his left your right he has right uh his left hand attacks which involved slams and a scratch if you're on his right side your left he can do a delayed sweep if you're in front of him he does head slam he is a very fun boss to fight once you've mastered him uh, the small room that he is usually associated with literally does not matter. All his attacks are easily telegraphed and avoided. And uh, he is, I believe, in a low S tier position. A very good boss. Uh, what else do people fight as their first boss? I guess Flying Dragon Agil? Some people have fought him. Now, all the dragon enemies in this game are very similar. Uh, some of them have their unique things. Flying Dragon Agil, however, is just a fire dragon. He has nothing exactly unique. And uh, you can go up to him and bait out his foot stomps. After every foot stomp, he will leave his head right in your reach for you to smack two or three times. And then... He goes back up, and he does another foot slam, and you repeat. He is very punishable, but extremely boring. I will put him here. He is way... Dragons are way better than these two, of course. So I will put him right there. Uh, Alright, I think it's time we get to it. The first main boss of the game. Where is the man? Margit... The Fell Omen. Hot take incoming. Market the Fell Omen is, let's see. Most people think of him as like the Udex Gundir of the game. He is extremely like punishing. Uh, he gates away a lot of the player base. Most people struggle with him a lot. Um, let me think real quick. He, his first phase is a slow and a somewhat methodical yet boring fight. But you have to be on your toes because he has roll catches out his butt. Uh, but before we move on to a second phase explanations, I'll put him rightfully, rightfully in B tier. I cannot rank him any higher because of his second phase. Um, now he does get he, uh, in second phase. He starts off with this big hammer slam, and then he gets far more aggressive. 
Normally, I like that on a boss. However, Margit does get one completely undodgeable attack. Uh, through normal means, of course. And that is, he will make a greatsword in his left hand, poke with it, and then swipe with the greatsword, and then slam down with his cane. This attack, if you are in close, can result in three things. If you get hit by the first sword, and you iframe, you'll get slammed by his cane. If you get hit by the first sword, you get hit by the second sword, you can iframe and not get hit by his cane. You can dodge the first sword, get hit by his second sword attack, and then dodge his cane. In all three of these, you're getting hit. And I don't like that in a boss. One way you can dodge it is to like predict it's coming and then run away. But that is extremely boring. And then on top of that, he uh, has he his dagger is a whole other beast. So his dagger, you have to dodge to the left, like 45 degrees to the left towards him, or like 45 degrees to the right towards him to fully dodge his dagger swipes. However, they are ridiculously fast. Um, and he can start off with the dagger, which is the worst part. And it makes him... Sometimes, you know, you're just fighting him, and then he's just like, Yep, I'm gonna dagger now. And there's almost nothing you can do about it except take a hit. Uh, he can also follow up dagger, a slower version of dagger swipes, after two of his combos. Which uh, is way better, because you can avoid that. But the fast double dagger is ridiculous. Now, two pe problems people have with this boss is his uh, greatsword spinny. Which, uh, where he materializes his greatsword and does four hits while spinning. The way to dodge that is actually just dodge to the left. Like, four, like three times. It is actually extremely easy to dodge. Give it a try. And his other problem attack is, I believe, his long wind-up attack. It actually has a tell for when he's going to bring it down. Just watch, and he's going to, like, bend his back a little bit further back than, like, he was. And he's going to attack right after. But because of his dagger and his undodgeable combo, he has to land in B. Some balancing issues, but he is alright of a boss. Maybe a little boring. He's, like, a low B. I'll fix that. In a little bit. Now, after getting past Margit, we obviously have Godric the Grafted. This guy, what what do I do with this guy? I'm putting him above Margit. He is fair. Actually, hmm. He has a contention for C tier. No, I'll put him in B. Godric is a fight that kind of forces you to back off. Because of his wind attack, which is completely un-iframable if you're caught in it. Uh, like, you'll get hit by the first hit no matter what if he starts it and you're close. Um, it forces you to basically backpedal a little bit after every time you go in for an opening. But other than that, you can mostly stay close to him and just wail on him. His attacks are very easily telegraphed and easy to dodge once you learn it. However, there has been instances where he used a breath. And the fire projectiles go off in weird directions because of the ground and how the ground is angled. That is a small balance issue, but overall, Godric is a pretty balanced and decent fight. Way better than Margit, of course, in terms of balance, so I'll put him there. Um, after that, the game really opens up, so I don't really know how else to order these. Let's order these by, like, thing. Oh, wait, the Carrion Knight is a normal enemy. How could I have forgotten? Okay, let's get this guy out of the way. Bloodhound Knight. This is the guy everyone fights to get the OP Bleed Curve Sword. Bloodhound Knight. 
is a C tier boss. He is better than Dragon. Bloodhound Knight is... He has like two or three openings. One of them is he drags his claw along the ground and then scratches you. And then he flies up in the air and slams down a little bit. That attack is an opening. The other one is his three hit combo. Uh, after the third hit, you can poke him. And then he might jump into the air for a fourth slam down hit. And then you can poke him again. Overall, he doesn't have any undodgeables. But he's a very boring fight. <laughs> so it fits the de definition of C tier perfectly. Who else is there? Ah, yes. Let's get this out of the way. Crucible Knight. The Crucible Knight from the Everjal, aka the uh, Supple Tail Crucible Knight. This is another hot take, but he goes here. Supple Tail Crucible Knight is by far my second favorite fight in this entire game. Uh, I look forward to finding him every single playthrough. In fact, I usually go fight him before any other boss outside of maybe the Tree Spirit. So I'm like level 9 or 10, and I just rush to him, and I fight him in a 10 minute adrenaline rush. Very cool. Um, a lot of people complain about how if you try to back away and click the Estus button, he will charge you down and thrust the shit out of you. Like if you back away and you click heal, he's gonna poke you. And then you roll away, you roll back once, you press heal, he's gonna poke you. And uh, it could get frustrating at, to, at times. But what you fail to realize is Crucible Knight is a game of openings and turns. You take turns with the Crucible Knight. He will do his combo to finish. And then you can do your turn where you attack him once. And then it's his turn again. And then it's your turn again. Uh, if you keep rolling to the right, his left, his shield side... You can know when it's your turn, when he's recovering and he brings his starts to bring his shield back up to like normal position. That's when you know you can attack. And even if you fail to attack like properly and land a hit on him, you'll hit a shield. In which case he will use the shield bash. And shield bash is a guaranteed opening for you. So you just take turns with him and he is extremely enjoyable. When he reaches phase 2, he starts using the Aspect of Crucible Tail attack after some of his combos, which will elongate the combos by one attack sometimes. You can still use the previous strat of seeing if he hoists his shield back up, but you have to be a little bit more careful to see when it's your turn. And also he can use Supple Tail as um, an opening attack that... I don't believe combos into anything. I could be mistaken about that. But it is very easy to see coming. And uh, it adds like a dynamic to the fight. The only complaint I have is his dash attack, which just doesn't have any counterplay. You can't really do anything to him. You just dodge it. And then it's his turn again, basically. It breaks the flow of battle. Uh, and just like... I guess it gives you time to heal, actually. And uh, a tip for players is that don't ever get away from him. If you run away, he will chase you down. And he is very hard if you're if he, you're at range. But if you're next to him, you want to wait till he does the uh, weapon art stomp. Where he holds his two, his two hands on his sword and he stomps. And then after that, he will do a slam down and then a double spin. After that is a big opening where you can get perhaps two or three hits in, or you can get an Estus heal off. That is his biggest opening, but if you start rolling right, you might see some other openings that you can take advantage of to speed up the fight. But regardless, Crucible Knight is the perfectly balanced, one of the most fun fights in the game, and there is very little that can top it. It even tops the Tree Spirit, so that's how you know the guy's good. Um, who else do people fight relatively early on? I guess I can use Lion Guardian, because you do fight one in Stormhill, the Stormvale Castle. This guy... Is 
it's hard to say, really. I guess I'll put him here. He is hyper-aggressive and only has openings on, like, two of his attacks where he slams down. Even then, you can get only, like, one hit in because he will, like, drag his weapon along the ground to hit you again. And then after that, he, like, backs away. It's like... It's like playing a really boring game of hide-and-seek and just waiting it out. I'll just put him in C. Nothing really unfair about him. Cemetery Shade? I don't even know where- this is a normal enemy. <laughs> I was thinking about putting him maybe somewhere else. Oh, this music! I love this music. Uh... Alright, next up... Who else do people fight? Leonine Mismigotten. This guy has contention to be a normal enemy. He staggers a lot. He's not fun. He's a waiting game. Just like hit him, and then get ready to dodge when he gets poised with his stomp, or if he backs away, and then he comes in and you hit him, and you just hit him until he dies. Nothing to talk about. Uh, let's see. Knight's Cavalry. Ooh. We fight these guys. Alright. Knight's Cavalry. What do I want to say about you? Knight's Cavalry honestly has a easy contention here. These guys, especially the Halberd guy, just runs away the whole time. Literally just runs away. It's so very boring. I almost feel like uh, the Halberd guys were like B team's like result of trying to remix a tree sentinel and just failed miserably. He they are so terribly like uneventful to fight, I guess, is the right way to put it. Um, they just run away the whole time. <laughs> Speaking of Tree Sentinel, let's do that. Tree Sentinel, however, I think Tree Sentinel is the first member of the A tier. This man, he really kicks your ass. Like, he is your welcome to the game. Unless, of course, you're like, that's a big scary golden guy. Let's, uh, let's not fight him. But for Souls veterans and probably most people who enjoy a challenge, this might be your first boss to kill. Uh, but most people come back later. And most people cheese him with a horse. Which uh, is quite unfortunate, because Tree Sentinel is genuinely fun. Uh, every attack he does is part of a combo chain, or something that you can punish. And nothing is unfair. Now some might say his shield slam is questionable. But that's because most people are rolling away from him when he does the shield slam. Or the shield push. What you want to do is roll into the shield. Because shockwaves travel outwards. And I find it a lot more consistent to dodge his attacks if you roll into him. Uh, some people say he has very little openings. He has a lot of openings. At the end of every one of his combos where he leans down from his horse to uh, strike you is an opening and uh, when he does his charge at you you can back up and roll backwards and you'll land right next to him allowing you to get maybe two or three hits in um yeah tree sentinel very good uh let's see what is the next boss we want to look at I suppose Rune Bear. Mm. Rune Bear is better than Knight's Cavalry. 
Rune Bear, they have a very ch fast charge attack. That is the only thing I remember from them. Everything else is extremely forgettable. Like, that, everything else is extremely telegraphed. You can almost hide under him for a lot of things. Just dodge and strike and strike and dodge and he'll go down. Unless, of course, he decides to spam his almost instant charge like four times in a row. I know it has a tell where he rears his head back, but sometimes it is just impossible to dodge. Especially with a strength build, if you're wielding like a colossal greatsword, you're just like, all right, I swung. Guess I'll take this, uh, I'll take this L and get hit by his charge attack. Uh, he's all right, but he's definitely not fun. And the charge attack is a little unbalanced, but he is better than Mr. Runaway a lot. So I'll put him there. Uh, uh, Ancient Hero of Zamor is a Eversal fight. So I guess I can put him in. He. Mm, I think I'll put him here. His ice just like tickles you. It just tickles. <laughs> it's very, it's, it's pretty difficult to avoid his ice. Uh, his like horde frost breath, basically. Other than that, his moveset is somewhat forgettable. He's just a pretty typical sword guy. You just roll, dodge, strike him. Roll, dodge, strike him. Uh... Next up, Black Knife Assassin. This guy. Woo! This guy. Oh, this music that's playing right now? One moment. Freaking Margit's music. It is so uneventful. It just sounds like... Imagine Cleric Beast's theme, but like it never picks up. Alright, anyways, stop. let's stop like destroying Margit. And instead, discuss the tier list. Uh, who do we go on to? Yo, yeah, Black Knife Assassin. Where do I even put this guy? I think it's only right I put him in low B. He, these edgelords, also they're she's. These absolute edgelords are terrifying. Their attacks are, like, fast, and they, like, move about a lot. However, they do have very clear openings. For example, the biggest opening they have is perhaps the dash, the uh, jump attack, where they jump in the air and slam their daggers into the ground. The recovery on that is so long, you can even run in behind them and get a backstab off and still, pr and maybe even wait before you get the backstab. Even the heaviest of weapons can get like one or two hits in during that recovery. Uh, another opening is when they use their uh, red sword, their blade of death. You can roll towards them, which will force them to into an animation where they hold their dagger backhand and try to like stab it into you like that. That attack has no hyper armor and is slow. So you can get a rolling attack in, and maybe even more if he decides to like R1 mash you, and you can just stun lock him. These guys have a lot of openings, but you have to be on your toes for when to heal and when to dodge, because they have some mix up. But overall, these guys, these guys are fun. I'll give them that. Uh, I'm staring at all these dragons, and by all of them, I mean like. Is there any other dragon? I guess magma worm counts. Yeah, I'm looking at these dragons, and I just want to do them real quick, so let's do that. Glenstone Dragon Smirag is a Geel, but he gains an ability where he holds, like, I'm pretty sure this is the dragon where he, like, can shoot crystal soul spears from his mouth. And also he has like a crystal burst, like shotgun type of blast. That 
um, makes the fight a little bit more interesting. So I'll put him above a Gyo and nothing more. Now, the King Exekies. This guy is a dragon, but his unique uh, attack is that he just pukes all over the floor. And you have to run a ludicrous distance away from him, or a lesser ludicrous distance behind him to not get rotted, or just straight up killed by the breath's damage. And as I've said before with uh, Margit, running away is not fun. This guy is lies below Knight's Cavalry. Borealis? Um, he's not as bad as Exekies. But Borealis has uh, this Ice Scream attack, which is instant and almost impossible to dodge unless you are just getting in there to attack him once and then getting away. Uh, he also has a longer wind-up one, which just forces you to sit away from him and wait. And if you're not running, you know, Int or Faith, you just sit there waiting for him to, and be like, Yep, yeah, Dragon, time to wait. This guy is better than Exekies. Because he doesn't kill you. But Borealis is pretty bad. Magma Worm. A.K.A. Dragon with Sword. Just go behind him. Or under him. And uh, he dies. Um, very uneventful fight. I'll put him a guess. Mm. Below Ancient Hero of Zamor. Who else do I really want to talk about? Crystallians! Let's do that. Oh, this music. It's so good. It's like Castlevania music. Alright, Crystallians, their gimmick is that they only take full damage from blunt damage until their poise is broken, after which they will stagger and take full damage from everything. Um, there are, These guys come in three versions. They come in AFK, which uh, refers to the ring guys. The ring guys literally do nothing but throw low damage discs at you and uh, Beyblade around. They do nothing. They come in uh, bullshit, which is mage mode, in that the mage has this crystal burst, like where he fires a bunch of bullets at you that you basically can't dodge. And as you know, undodgeables are not fun. And then thirdly, they come in annoying, aka spear mode. These guys will poke you and poke you and poke you until you drop in submission. These guys are, depending on which combination of Crystallians you get, they can range from boring as all hell, like uh, the single ring guy in Raya Lucaria tunnels, or the triple in the Celia hideaway which is actual bullshit. So, these guys are pretty trash. I'll put them here. <laughs> All right. So we're in about the Liernia area. Let's get uh, some Liernia boys out of the way. Red Wolf of Radagon, AKA Sif, but with 60 int. These guys are fun but perhaps not a tier i'll put them right here they only have like two real openings one where they jump really high into the air at you and then slam down and the other where they do uh a charge dash bite at you and the third where they do two chomps and then the charge dash bite other than that, they just run around and shoot lasers at you. Kind of boring, but they're all, they're all right of a boss. Hmm. Now, which one of these are Raya Lucaria bosses? I guess right after, people will fight Renala, Queen of the Full Moon. Mrs. Renala will go right there. Renala, uh, just remember I am basing this off of melee, so I do recognize the struggles of melee 
but man, this fight is good. Um, first phase is a gimmick fight where every you, it's physically impossible for you to die. The only things that do relevant damage towards you are her gravestone attack, which she gets under like about half health, and also the chandelier's falling. But the chandelier falling is so delayed and has the most obvious tell where like fire drops onto the ground if you die in first phase it's probably because you didn't know about these two things you got unlucky or i don't know what to say maybe you're doing soul level one or something but even then like the books and the fire just does negligible damage so with a free phase one we get into a totally badass phase two where she will barrage you with crystal sorcery basically um she fires a soul stream that one shots but is extremely easy to dodge and punish she will let's see she has a crystal shotgun uh where she will like just blast the front also very easy to dodge she has a uh, crystal rapid fire where she spawns like eight i think little projectiles and shoots them at you in a row she has jump into the air and fire a gajillion crystal projectiles uh which you can just run around or run forwards to dodge she and then she also has various staff attacks the staff attacks are a little problematic and is probably my one of my main things about the minor complaints part of a tier but they aren't too bad and you can get in damage in between just about every single sorcery if you do a jump attack or just a running attack uh in her quote-unquote phase three or phase four if you want to see it that way she will unlock ash summons um let's see the doggo summons, where she summons like three or four doggos, is n near negligible. The dogs die in one hit with most weapons you have at around this time, or perhaps two hits if you're weaker. And you can even just bait them away and then like run straight towards the boss and ignore the dogs, because they despawn rather fast. Two, she will summon uh, a Blenhound Knight. This is the worst part and my other complaint about minor complaint. She will- the Bloodhound Knight basically restricts you from aggroing her and you just have to run away from the Bloodhound Knight until it, like, disappears. Definitely her most annoying summon. Three is where she says, Come forth, O Storm Dragon, and summons a dragon that does nothing. Just go up to her and attack. It- the dragon literally whiffs, like, 90% of the time. And when it does hit, you can probably see it coming and just dodge. The dragon may be intimidating, but just ape Renala, who cares? And the fourth is the Oathsorn Giant. Just don't get greedy. If she says Oathsorn Giant, be ready for it to fall on you. Like, just dodge it. <laughs> um, who else is there that are decent bosses? Uh, of the area who do we have let's see royal knight loretta loretta is tree sentinel but with a gun but and since he has a gun and he seems she seems to like to spam the gun a lot that's a that's a b-tier boss right there baby <laughs> You have to run towards her to get attacks in, and then you get punished by her gun. It's just not a good time. Actually, I'm considering this. Nah, I think B's fine. Uh, hmm. Wow, we're really basically done with most early game. Oh, Omen Killer. Yep, this guy is Capra Demon. He has Capra attacks, as well as uh, some fire and some slammies. Um, nothing else to be said. 
Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I need to cross off the list. Oh, to be a Mariner. There are a few versions of him, and they all differ by what kind of summon he has. The most badass one is the one I think in Altus Plateau, where she, he summons this gigantic skeleton that is super cool. But he's not even a boss. I guess that. <laughs> You're just wailing on a guy who can't fight back. I, I mean, I know he has like he can splash like ghost water at you and he can slam his boat at you. But like if you're getting hit by those, you're probably not taking damage. Well, any relevant damage or you're dodging them. He's he's terrible. He just the only threat he has is his summons. Uh, I think I got most of the earlier game bosses. Grave Warden Duelist. Let's do this. There are two versions of this guy. One of them fair, one of them not. So one of them has this axe and a ball and chain. That one is the fair version. The other one he dual wields and is just like undodgeables out of the butthole if I remember him correctly. I haven't fought these guys many times because I typically don't fight them in the cat. I don't usually visit the catacombs because I don't use ashes. But from my experience with them, I find them pretty unfair. They're probably still better than like... Nah, they're not better than Exekis. I'm just gonna put them here. Alright. And I think the last of the early game encounters would be Erdtree Avatar and Bell Bearing Hunter. Erdtree Avatar. There's two versions of them. One of them uh, puts a Scarlet Rot pool, like, basically in the vast vicinity of the area, which you're just running away from. And that version is probably D tier. But the normal Erdtree Avatar is a boring but balanced fight, which would be a B tier. So, I will put Erdtree Avatar right here. It's basically Stray Demon. And only Stray Demon. That's all this guy is. Bell Bearing Hunter, though. What is this music? Hold on. Let's cycle back through good music, shall we? Okay. Bell Bearing Hunter, you may encounter this guy multiple times throughout your playthrough. Depending on how lucky you get with nighttime cycles. And he has the same moveset as Elamer of the Briar. So I'll rank them together because they're the same enemy. These guys are pretty similar to Crucible Knights in that if you try to run away, they will kick your ass. But if you're close, they present a lot of opportunities to counterattack and to uh, heal. They, I guess, I think the best place to put them would be A tier. They're not that great. They're not as great as the Crucible Knight. But they're definitely a fair and very fun fight. I do enjoy fighting them. Alright. Now, the game really branches out. Because there's a lot of pretty similar leveled areas. Let's try to, like, put them all, like, together. <laughs> um... All right, I'll talk about these. Ancestor Spirit has one of the best music tracks in the game, without a doubt. But these guys are, oh my god, they're kind of a waiting fest. You're baiting out the attack where they jump into the air three times and slam onto you. And other than that, they're just kind of running away and spewing gas everywhere. If you have a gun or some kind of like magic missile or something, they're all right. But otherwise, you're just waiting around. I'll put them above Urtree Avatar, however. Actually, below Urtree Avatar. Urtree Avatar, at least you can fight. 
Commander O'Neill, the Kalid Special. Um, I don't know how to think about this guy. His phase one is when all his uh, archer swordsman guys are alive. And he just walks around menacingly and buffs. You're fighting five sword, uh, sword guys. But after you take out his men, he comes at you very slowly. But with the force of a thousand men. Um, he has three, I want to say, combos. He can do swipe, swipe, and then swipe again, and then slam down. During each of those swipes, you can get a hit in. Even with a colossal weapon, like rolling R1. Just roll R1, roll R1, roll R1, roll R1. Um, he has sweep, sweep, and then poke. And then a, uh, what's it called, AOE around him. It, basically, every time he does a poke attack, he can follow it up with an AOE that you want to get out of. Uh, this is basically to keep you on your toes. And then his third big attack combo is if you're on your right, his left side, he can do a halberd like back thrust at you and then a big sweep which you can punish after the sweep and his main mechanic attack is where he gathers up rot and you have to run away um it just like prevents you from aping him i guess overall o'neill is a b tier he is fun engaging and doesn't force you to run away that much and when he does force you to walk away, it's either for a short, like, while, or once a fight with his big mechanic. So, he belongs fairly in B tier, I think. Falling Star Beast. This is a hot take. From what I've seen from other people and my friends, they freaking hate this guy. Falling Star Beast is a community-hated boss. Most people would probably say C or D tier. Some may even say he's trash tier. But I, not I, this man, this man is an A tier fight. And I would like to defend him a little bit. Now, one of the biggest complaints is that he has titanium, vibranium, alloy defenses. But you might fail to realize, this guy has a face. And you can smack his face for gigantic amounts of damage. I, uh, with a, like, I think plus five greatsword, you can probably do like four or five hundred damage right in his head. Jump attack. Um, let's see. What do these people not like? Ah, his main melee combo, where he swings his mandibles at you, is easily telegraphed and very punishable. He has multiple combos where he might. Uh, put bring his head down and that is the end of his combo he has a grab attack that leaves literally like time for three or four smacks and depending on your weapon it's just like he leaves his head so vulnerable and i don't see how people like are unable to take advantage of that um his, he has a charge attack that where he will charge at you but lead and predict your movement this both makes it difficult to dodge, but also extremely easy. If you see the charge attack coming, run one direction, quickly turn around, and he will just whiff. And then he'll turn around, and he'll whiff again. Very easy to dodge attack. He has gravity magic, where he uh, will spawn two rocks below you, and then a big set of rocks below you. You can sprint. Yes, you can literally sprint those three attacks, and then get a shot off on his head with a jump attack. Um, his flying dive attack has a precise hitbox where you, you have to roll pretty precisely. He has a delayed tail attack, which is very easily telegraphed. You just have to wait for it. Overall, this guy has no undodgeables and a very like engaging move set where you take your turn, he takes his turn, and you strike at each other until one of you go down very good boss i fail to see how people fail to appreciate this guy 
like, I don't know where all the complaints are coming from, but I will not take him out of A. He he has contention to be S tier, but I, I'll take a page out of uh, the community's, like, complaints, I guess. I have literally zero complaints about this guy, so I don't have any minor complaints. He should be an S tier. Anyways, moving on. Dragonkin Soldier. There's one of these guys in, uh, I believe, Noxtella? Or Nocron. And there's another one of him. No, he, this one is in Nocron. The other one is in Lake of Rot. Uh, these guys do nothing. You wait for them to swing their left hand at you. You could go in and you smack their body until they die. This is a C tier boss at best. Very boring. However... Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella? Ooh, that's a B tier contender right there. This man forces you to really pay attention to your surroundings in his phase 2. His phase 1 is boring, much like Dragonkin Soldier, but this guy, in his phase 2, you gotta get aggressive. And while you're far away, he will spam Ice Lightning at you to no end. However, if you get close, he will use his melee combos. You can get hits in. Uh, he has multiple attacks where you have to like watch him as well as the ground for where Ice Lightning strikes. This is a management boss to its finest. And actually, I think I'll bring him... I do enjoy fighting him more than Margit. I guess, yeah, that, that's a good place. Godskin Noble. Right there. <laughs> the Godskin dudes come in Twink, Apostle, and Twunk, Noble. And uh, Twunk is terrible. He has some undodgeable rapier attacks, I believe. I can't really name them off the top of my head, but when I fight them, I will see it and I'll just like roll and run away. Because I know you can't iframe it. He has this really annoying belly, like push attack in phase two where he just like pops you into the air it has absolutely no tell and you just enjoy damage i guess because if you're close to him he just like throws you into the air and uh his signature move is a rolling attack uh if you get, it's notoriously difficult to dodge for a lot of like newer players but just so you know you can run to the side and then roll to the side, slightly through him, and then just run along with him, and he will never roll over you again. The twist is that he will keep rolling for perhaps 10 seconds. Why? <laughs> Overall, this guy's terrible. I would never fight him. On the other hand, Twink! Woo! Twink is a good boss. Twink has uh, fun moves where he uses his uh, twin blades, and you can dodge just about every single one of them. He has, when when you reach his phase 2, each of his uh, elongated like noodle attacks are mechanics, essentially. For example, the one where he like spins his sword in a like Beyblade and just comes towards you. You have to roll through him. And then, like, his black fire attack, you just, like, roll it twice and get away. This guy's just mechanic-based, and you have to dodge him. Uh, you can play him from range, but he will play range at you. He's a good guy. I like him. Now, we don't have a lot left. Regal Royal Ancestral Spirit. This guy goes right next to Ancestral Spirit. Um... Goldifroy, I, it, it, it's, it's, it's Godric, I believe, like, what? I'll put him there. <laughs> uh, Demi-Human Queen, these guys are basically normal enemies. It's the enemies that come with them that are difficult. They don't do much by themselves. Uh, Mimic tier is Jank. Uh, I'll put him in D tier. He's not unfair or unbalanced or unfun. He's just boring. <laughs> I almost want to put him here. I guess actually I will put him here. Abductor Virgins. 
are trash. I'll put them there. These guys, like, they're just pain. You have to kite them for so long, waiting for an opening between, like, grinder guy and blades guy. Like, if blade guy throws his blades and grinder guy is doing a melee, you can go in. It's a waiting game. Unless, you, of course, you use the cheese spot on the rocks, in which case they're still kind of annoying. So I'll just keep him there. Oh, Fogrown uh, Falling Star Beast is a longer Falling Star Beast. And that means I can enjoy it more. So I will put him right there. Worm Face. This is boring. <laughs> just go in under his feet, smack him, and don't get killed. Uh... Uh, let's see here. Who else do I have that's pretty early? Radon! Yes! Radon! Oh my god, the presentation of this fight. This guy is a straight-up raid boss. You bring, like, six other dudes with you if you play him casually, and you go, like, attack this gigantic hulk of a man uh, on his poor horse that is only able to lift him because he's using gravity magic on himself. Yes, that's true. You can read it on his remembrance that he learned the gravity magic so that he can ride his ter like feeble steed. So basically, Radon is holding himself up and not the horse. But anyways, Radon. This guy, I think he's 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 a tier worthy. You can mostly get underneath of him and dodge a good chunk of his combos. But most of his combos also end with a slam that you have to iframe. So after you learn them, he's uh, pretty alright. He also has jump rope mechanics where he shoots shockwaves that you can jump over in his after he shoots down as a meteor. It's a, it's a good experience. I'll put him squarely in A tier. Of course, if it's a difficulty boss for like a first time playthrough, he's an S. But for fun and balanced, he's right here. The only minor complaint I have is that he will one-shot you unless you have a redonkulous amount of HP for where he's located. But I think that's deserved for a raid boss. For someone who's like done a couple MMOs in his life, I think that's completely understandable. He's a very good challenge if you fight him solo, and he is a badass moment boss when you fight him with everyone you can summon. All right, next. Who else do we have? Ooh, we have approached the, the end game, eh? All right, let's take a moment to appreciate Electo Black Knife Ringleader. This is Black Knife Assassin, but without the weaknesses of Black Knife Assassin that make them balanced. Where do I put Black Knife Assassin? Right there. This guy's in bottom C tier. He has a very somewhat unfair attack where he does anime slashes at you. Uh, you can see it coming, but it's a little annoying at times. And he has poise. And those together make him a pretty meh boss. Also, extremely edgy with the darkness effect of the Eversal. I guess I can give him bonus points and put him like that because of his edge. Alright, Black Blade Kindred. These guys come in two forms. Uh, sword and Axe, Sword and Halberd, or Twin Blade and Axe. Sword and Halberd are, have zero undodgeables. They are 100% fair fights and extremely engaging. Twin Blade and Axe... The Twin Blade has some questionable attacks at times, but most of the time they are very fair. However, I don't enjoy fighting them enough for them to go into A, so I think I will put them right here. Learn their attacks. These guys these guys are some of the most fair enemies in the game. Uh I guess it does fit with the balance issue statement because they hit like a truck, especially the one in Bestial Sanctum. 
he will flat out one shot you with like 25 vigor sometimes maybe even 30 vigor and it's like a perfectionist fight you have to perfect him to kill him uh and he does have some questionable attacks for example uh let's see His sword wombo combo sometimes has a jank hitbox. But that's only a small complaint, so I think B is a good place to put it. Hmm. Oh dear. Valiant gargoyles. The demon princes that if they the demon princes were created by B team. Right there. Now, despite how high I ranked, you know, Blackblade Kindred, which is basically just a gargoyle, Valent Gargoyles have some of the jankiest AI I think I've seen in the game. I believe they're supposed to act where, like, one gargoyle will come in to fight you, the other one will jump away to, like, they will jump away to indicate each other's turns, and uh, the gargoyle fighting you will be, like, on your dick. And the gargoyle that's like hanging back will just breathe poison. However, some most of the time that's not the case. Th these AIs seem to be jank where like both of them are attacking you sometimes. And sometimes both of them are spitting poison. At least in my experience. Um, and also the poison is nigh invisible. And that's terrible. So that's a D tier boss. This is probably the first boss in my playthroughs where I was like... You know, sometimes I wish I used ranged weapons more. <laughs> but anyways, I digress. Let's continue. Uh, what is the next boss here that people fight before others? Oh, Astel. Astel is boring. <laughs> I think top of C is pretty good. So he has attacks that sometimes I question if it has a hitbox or not. Like I'm pretty sure the only attack I've ever hit gotten hit by from Estelle is the hyper beam the first time I went into the boss room and uh, his pulses. Yeah, Estelle has this a mechanic where he will do RPG style like pulse uh pulses along the floor it's like a kind of out in mechanic from like a mmo game but he just doesn't do a lot and also his meteor strat meteor attack is nigh like undodgeable i feel like but i think there are ways to dodge it i've dodged it a few times but you know estelle is a pretty mad boss but he's still better than a lot of the other stuff, so I'll put him right there. Alright. Oh, this is some Erd Tree Avatar music. Alright. Let's take a look. Who else do we even have? Okay. The next boss I think I'll do is good old... I think I, people usually fight Lich Dragon Fortis Axe before the others, so let's do him. Fortis Axe is very similar to Lance Axe, so I guess they're bundled into the same boss. Let's do it. Fortis Axe is A tier for sure. I just don't know where to put it. I think right there? No, right here. Fortis Axe has a mechanic where it counters the dragon strategies of most souls players which is to go under the boss and strike the legs fortis axe will put a uh lightning like tracker on you if you go under him which will strike you with lightning moments later this lightning can be rolled it can be sprinted out of it can be walked out of i'm pretty sure so it's not that big of a deal as long as you keep moving after you're under him uh he has many attacks that res like require precise timing and roll direction because of the lightning that fault comes afterwards 
Some of them require you to go under him, which means you have to, like, get ready to do the, like, lightning strike. But for the most part, his attacks are all fair, and at the end of all his combos, he will lay his head down and let you smack it a little bit. What a kind guy. He, his lightning, though, that's very cool. He, You can jump rope with the lightning. Just jump over to shockwaves. It is a very unique way of doing mechanics, and very fun. So... I don't really have anything bad to say about Fortis Axe or Lance Axe. Uh, let, let me think. Yeah, the Death Clouds, I don't think have ever come in into like, uh, relevance in any of my fights with my man Fortis Axe, so he's a good fight. Uh, so now we are in Lindell. So. We can do Lindell bosses now. Oh, this other Estelle. I'm gonna put him with the first Estelle. Where is he? Right there. He goes right there. It's pretty similar Estelles. Uh... Oh, Rykard. How could I miss you? This is the Yorm of this game. Uh... He requires a jank weapon that requires you to basically pick it up. And then if you want to do relevant damage, you want to leave and then go upgrade that baby uh, and then come back. That's not a big deal since somber stones are literally free. You can buy them from uh, EG and you can upgrade that serpent slayer to like plus four. Or if you have the spares, you can go up to five or six pretty easily. And, uh, this guy's, uh, he's, a uh, he's a piece of work, I guess. His phase one is very boring and very easy, but his phase two is just extremely hectic. Sometimes I have no idea what the hell is going on. So, like, uh... And he's not exactly fun. And he only has one strat. In the sense of my tier list, I think I can only put him in D. <laughs> Poor guy. Like, he's a cool jank fight. Actually, uh, mm, I feel bad. He is fun. I do look forward to fighting him. Bottom of B. Let's go. Okay, now we are actually in Lindell. And... In the basement of Lindell, you can find Moog, the Omen. Moog has a very fun... He has no balance issues. I'm putting him here. He has the most unintuitive, in my opinion, uh, slam attack, overhead slam, uh, in the game. I have trouble dodging that attack. Uh, but all of his attacks are fair. They leave openings. You can, like, engage with him. He is a good guy. And the final boss of Lindell is Morgoth, the Omen King. Despite earlier Margit and his imperfections, Morgoth will be the third contender of S tier. Morgoth decided that his undodgeable bullshit is uh is not that good and it's not fun for the player and not fun for him. So he foregone that and became a dex nerd and suddenly his moveset became a lot more fair and fun. Uh his phase two is a little bit iffy because he has a like wombo combo attack, but you can most of the time kind of see it coming and just run away. I have no qualms and no problems with Morgoth, uh, o Morgoth, the Omen King. He's a good guy. And we're finally on to Farum Azla. Well, not yet. There's some. There's two guys before Farum Azla. I think two guys. These two. I think Loretta can also qualify. Moog can qualify as well. So let's let's put let's put the rest of them in order. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, yep. Put 
the rest of them in order. I think that's uh, that's an order. All right, Commander Nyal is not as good as Commander. Well, actually, I think he might be better. Nyal gained some move sets. He's got some lightning and some dashes. It kind of makes him more engaging, but that also means he uh, he's AI loopable. If you run away after engaging him, he will almost always follow up with the dive or the dash. And uh, you don't really get to see much else of his moveset. So he's like limited better than O'Neal, I guess. Fire Giant. A overall most hated boss of the game. <laughs> I think. In his first phase, he does nothing. So I'm not even going to bother looking at his first phase you just hit his ankle until it breaks and then hit his ankle some more and then it actually breaks but after you break it he goes to phase two and phase two is a piece of work um his weakness is his eyeball which you can rarely hit but also his hands which you can hit more often but from what i've seen you can also just run around to his foot hit it like five or six times during every attack and he's gonna roll away and you rinse and repeat this guy this guy is unfun and unbalanced d tier right there sometimes too easy sometimes too annoying and nobody likes chasing a big guy who rolls through the map like halfway across a giant map and chase him the whole fight terrible uh, Loretta. This is just Royal Knight Loretta, but with a less dodgeable four arrow attack that you have to sprint forwards so that like two or three of the arrows can whiff and you can dodge the like remaining two. So you have to sprint forwards whenever she does the arrow attack. But other than that, it's a, basically the same fight as Royal Knight Loretta. Just a bigger health bar, which... Makes me like it a lot less. I think I put him here. By some strats, it means high damage weapon art strats. So yeah, he she's pretty bad. I'll leave Melania for last. I think that's a hot take that is a, is a, is coming. Moog is a raid boss with mechanics right there. I don't want to say anything else about Moog. Because I think a lot of people haven't fought him yet. So just put him right there and leave it at that. Now we can finally move on to Faru Mazala, which has two bosses. Uh, Dragon Lord Placid Sax. <laughs> Placidious Sax. My bad. Mr. Placid Sax has been alive for way too long. And he can quite literally not even hold himself back up. He is uh, he's, he's a thing. Um... Most of his attacks are fair, and you can go around and hit his tail, hit his butt. Uh, you can see his breath attacks coming from a mile away. Only problem I have is he teleports a good bit. And also, um, I think that's the only real complaint. Noting that, I think I have to put Placid Sack's bottom of A tier. Hey, at least they brought back the hyper beam attack from, uh, what's it called? My good man, Medir from Dark Souls 3. Ooh, Malaketh. Malaketh's phase one is beautifully done. It, like, punishes you for extreme aggression with any build and, uh, forces you to play a calm and calculated game of chess where you take turns with the beast clergyman until, like, one of you guys find an opening in which case you can capitalize on it beast clergyman has multiple openings that you can counter attack and he isn't quite too tanky either and phase two malaketh ooh, so beautiful um some people have found it difficult to find openings but that's because range strats don't really work on this guy his ranged his moveset if you are ranged involves like jumping at you with undodgeables and shit so like you ha are forced to stay close to him 
and once you do stay close, you'll find that every one of his melee combos ends with an opening. Uh, and if you study his moveset, there is nothing insane or bullshit about it. This guy... Right there. I just have to give him points for how elegant his, like, air attacks look. It's so anime. Mr. Gideon Olfnir. What do I want to say about the smartest being in the planet? He's got one trillion homing soul masses, meaning he is very intelligent. Uh, Discus, Disc of Light. Disc of Light is not fair. That's my big complaint. Right there, I think, is good. <laughs> this guy's terrible. He just spams magic the whole time and, like, rolls away from you. Who wants to fight this guy? I'll leave this guy for later. All right, hot takes, let it begin. Radagon. This guy has a couple undodgeable attacks. His AoEs are extremely fair and I love dodging them. However, once he starts teleporting, he becomes a different animal. There's an attack where he teleports on top of you and does a backhand slam with his uh, hammer. That attack is undodgeable unless you are backpedaling specifically, but he usually follows that up with a gun blast, like a shotgun, like, uh, light burst, which is undodgeable. Um, he does, ev just about every time he does a light burst, a shotgun blast, it's undodgeable. And for that undodgeability, and for how, like, pathetic he is, I think he's not fun, but he's pretty balanced for the most part he's like i'll put him here i think is a fair place to put him pretty balanced but fun if you have enough hp to tank his undodgeable bullshit elden beast oh no elden stars is just undodgeable I can't give it a pass. No matter how beautiful the boss is, the existence of Elden Stars ruins the fight. It, it's it's like it's like right there. All right. Well, until like I figure out how to like fight Elden Beast Soul Level One, I think I will not enjoy it. But apart from Elden Stars, almost all his attacks are fair. So I like him for the most part. It's just Elden Stars. So I'll keep him there for now. Alright, two more bosses to go. You know, if you exclude these two, well, mo just exclude this. We actually have a really good bell curve. We have very little, like, trash bosses, very little perfect bosses, and most of them are, like, C, B, and D. It's a cool little bell curve. Alright. Melania. Blade of Mikola. This boss. I... I literally don't know what to say about it. So... I'll just, like, voice my thoughts, and I will, will try to convince myself that she is an S tier or an A tier boss. So Melania is the super boss of this game. Basically like pretty much sub objectively the hardest boss in the game. I think everyone can agree on that. Uh however she let's see she life steals on hit but most of her attacks are very easily dodgeable and you can punish them a lot because she staggers. Uh, she is also parryable, which makes it, you know, even more counters. However, the one thing that brings down this fight is her anime attack. Also, her her weapon art. She just rises into air, and the first attack of that weapon art is completely undodgeable. 
you either have to get yourself a 100% barricade block shield to block it, or you like bloodhound step out, or you predict it coming and you start running away beforehand. And uh, I'm not quite fond of strategies that revolve around cheesing a mechanic with uh, with block, and I'm not quite fond of the fact that you need a specific weapon art to be able to dodge an attack. So like, the only like good way of dodging that attack in my eyes is therefore to see it coming and run away. And it really brings the flow of battle down. Like after I think around 70%, you just anticipate she does it every time you go in and you just start sprinting away after you poke her once. It's terrible. Like, <sighs> and then in phase two, the addition of Scarlet Rot to that attack makes it even worse. It makes like even the blocking strat questionable. So like, <sighs> but she's so fun to fight. I have to put her in A. And I think the fact that weapon undodgeable anime attack is such a major complaint that she has to be bottom of A. I can't convince myself that that attack is fair. If it requires the use of Bloodhound to dodge properly or like a special shield to block properly, yeah, that's uh yeah, that's pretty bad. Okay. A tier, mauled if you want. She's she's A tier. And finally, Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. I'm not even gonna hesitate. Best boss in the game, by far. In fact, I'm going to create another tier. Uh add row above. That says Let's see. There we go. Elden Lord. This man. This is the best boss in the game by far. No doubt about it. He. This guy is. Base, he's the leader of the. He's the guy who taught all the Crucible Knights how to fight. So if you think about it. This. We have Crucible Knight Sword. Crucible Knight Spear. This guy is Crucible Knight Axe. He has legs that make like a Belmont cry in fear and shame. He just, oh my god, his moveset is the most engaging and interactive moveset in the game. It leaves proper openings. You take turns with him to uh, like in trade blows. He will end his combos with a big slam or big rising axe. You have like two or three hits times in, and then she, he bring, he begins his next combo. He punishes you for careless play. He makes sure you know the timing of his AOEs down to the wire. And then when you feel like you've gotten the timing and you're like enjoying yourselves with that trade between your sword and his axe, his phase three basically starts. And he strips off his armor and shows him himself to be the world wrestling champion for 30 decades in a row 300 years running this man will kick your ass with 20 different wrestling moves and every single one of them made me like just like gave me chills down my spine just seeing it happen and like laughing in excitement because of how beautifully done this fight is all his attacks are super fair, and his death message is something along the lines of the crown requires strength to wield. And just looking at this champion of a man, you're just like, yep, you're right. You are way more fit to be a king than I am. Mr. Godfrey is the, go the guy in the game where I beat him the first time, adrenaline still pumping, and after I beat him was just sadness because I was like, oh no. I have to basically complete the whole game again just so I can fight Godfrey again. In fact, I'm almost tempted to make a backup of my saves at Godfrey just so I can fight him whenever I want. There has been only two bosses in like from software history that made me feel like this. One is Ludwig the Accursed. And two 
is uh, Ishin. Those two, this guy trumps them all. This is by far the best boss from software has ever made in their life. In their lifetime. Anyways, let's take a look through the tier list. Uh, see if there's anything we missed or want to change around. Um, hmm. I feel bad putting Melania in bottom A. I think I'll move her up, a, like, above red... Above... Mm. I'll put her above Tree Sentinel, I guess. But I can't put her any higher because of her undodgeable. Uh, let's see. Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella. Yeah, that's a good way of starting off B. Looks pretty fair. Red Wolf of Radagon does not belong here. I think I have to bring him down a little bit. We'll put him below the two dragons, I guess. No, below the Urtree avatar. Yep, that looks good. Uh, yeah, that looks like a pretty good tier list. Oh, right, I never discussed Godskin Duo. I don't think anyone has ever loved Godskin Duo. Um, who wants to fight Twunk, like, three times? Nobody wants to fight Twunk three times. I would love to fight Twink four times, but maybe not Twunk rolling around, like, kicking your ass the whole time. Uh, yeah, this is... B team made this fight a disaster. No other way to say it. All right, and uh, this is the Elden Ring tier list. Um, I know I have a lot of like uh, questionable decisions. If you watch this video, you can argue in the comment section below if you like disagree with a lot of things. But I think like objectively from uh, subjectively, of course, from a melee, like, build perspective that plays solo, these are pretty good rankings. Uh, now, of course, I want to shout out a few of these enemies. Crucible Knight. Try to rolling to the right and observing his shield movement strat. You'll, f uh, find this strat a making... will make this guy a lot more fun and interactive. Don't try parry strats. Those are somewhat inconsistent, I guess. Well, they're pretty consistent, but not interactive. Just roll to the right. You'll find a lot more fun with this guy, perhaps. Falling Star Beast. Give this guy a try. Um, try going to fight this guy in Celia Crystal Tunnel, perhaps at like soul level 20 or 30. Learn his attacks. Learn when you can go in and go out. And you might have a way better experience with Falling Star Beasts. These guys... I almost, almost want to put them in S, but I can't. Um, who else do I want to point out? Uh, I really want to put Margit in C tier. I really want to put Margit in C tier, but... I mean, my smoldering flame, I guess, put him in B, so he goes there. Uh, give Black Knight Assassins a learn. There's a good one to learn at uh, the front, like, uh, in the middle of Altus Plateau-ish, uh, before a hero grave. Learn that Black Knight Assassin. Um, it'll make you probably enjoy him a little bit more. I hope, but these edge lords are pretty good fights, no doubt about it. Except Electo, fuck Electo. Uh, try fighting all the dragons on foot in front of them and go after their heads. You'll find dragons a lot easier and a lot less boring if, than if you fight them on horseback. Just go in front of them, bait out their uh, stompies. Uh, roll the stompies and then jump attack their head very consistent and they staggered so pretty good uh fuck elden beast 
this guy, Elden Stars, make this fight extremely unfun. Uh, let's see. Who else do I complain about? Or want to bring up? Oh, reminder, Crystallians here is only the triple gank Crystallian that's bringing it down. And mostly the magic Crystallian that brings down the rankings. And uh, Melania could uh, could use a little bit more dodgeability in her ultimate attack that doesn't require Bloodhound Step. Um, and also the magic uh, greatsword guys, you should give them a try as well. Give them a fair try where you stick close to them the whole fight, even when you're chugging your Estus. And uh, you might enjoy these guys a lot more too. So these are... I guess the hot takes. Crucible Knight. Oh, and Tree Spirit. Learn Tree Spirit. I, people who did Tree Spirit as their tutorial boss, essentially, I applaud you. You fought and probably got to enjoy one of the best fights in the game. And, uh, alright, let's end it there. I want to say the three bosses that I will always look forward to on a playthrough, Godfrey... Supple Tail Crucible Knight and every single tree spirit. And, uh, yep, that's the tier list. Uh, let's t take a look if we remove this row. We have a beautiful bell curve with uh, low amounts of trash, low amounts of good bosses, and then just like pretty much averaging around C tier bosses. Pretty good. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, maybe see you guys later. Goodbye.